Okay, welcome back. Uh, after learning how to pull a cylinder and have the thickness of the walls uh, within good parameters, we're going to go ahead and take that cylinder. Now we're going to shape it into a vase. So I'm going to do our same wedging method. Just we're just realigning the clay particles. Just getting the clay nice and even. Okay, so once again, we've got about three pounds of clay. So we're just going to make a, a small vase, uh, somewhere around eight, eight inches or so. So once, just like so many other things, just repetition, once you get the hang of it, you're just going to be using the same techniques over and over again. We're just going to comb the clay up. Push it back down. And then to get it right in the middle, we're going to brace, use our body for leverage. Get it to be a little bit wider at the base. A little bit of unevenness comes out at the top. The right hand can come and just flatten that off. I'm gonna open up. Just pull our finger directly towards us. You wanna be careful when you're centering and opening that you don't open too far, that you don't open and overrun your support. That's, that's one of the reasons why I like to center them a little bit wider so that you can get in there to be able to open it up. Okay, left hand on the inside, right hand is pushing in and up. Just kind of rest on the rim. I think you can see that as I'm pulling, that right when I put my fingers, that I'm, I'm actually digging in and getting right down there. A lot of times with students, I'll actually just come and, and put a little uh, indent in there to make sure that we're not just sliding over that clay that's down at the bottom. So we're actually getting underneath that and starting to bring that up. Okay, I think I can do one more pull. Slow the wheel down just a little. Okay, so we've said in this process of making a cylinder that the inside hand has been like a doorstop that we've been pushing in and up. Well now, in order to shape the cylinder into a vase, the inside hand is allowed to start pushing out. And what we want to concentrate on is that we're maintaining an arch, that you're maintaining a curve that isn't going to collapse on itself. So here I'm, I'm pushing out with the inside hand and the outside hand is kind of riding above to help guide and, and keep it in that arched shape. So I would argue that cylinders are the craft and then now that we get to start shaping them, you know, that's the art part. That's where you're making creative choices. Uh, you know, where, where should the belly be? Where should the shoulder be? Should I collar in and have the neck be a little narrower? Um, you know, th this is where you start making choices. And one of the best things to do is to find a really nice vase and try and copy it. 
you know, nothing wrong with imitating. And so we're always looking at other sources and, and trying to see what a, place, a pleasing shape looks like. So I'm going to come, I'm going to bring out down here just a little bit. Have that be a little more uniform. And then I like shaping with uh, ribs. I got a metal rib here. In this case, to make sure that I have a nice continuous curve for the shoulder. And sometimes I'll actually just allow that corner to dig in and make a division between the shoulder and the neck. So I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to collar that in just a little bit. Like to leave a nice bead for the rim. Try not to thin that out too much. I think it helps it uh, to create a nice strong finish. Okay, back in the day, we all had a piece of chamois with our water bucket, something that we would use to smooth out. I've gotten in the habit, uh, I just use a piece of paper towel and um, it'll last for a few days and then I'll just throw it away. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna smooth out the rim and make sure that it's nice and even that way. I'm going to dig the water out. And now, once again, we're going to just follow the contour. And then we're just going to dig in. Maybe we just had a little bit of extra for support. That we're just going to cut that away. And be able to move, remove that. So now we're going to cut it off the bat, like to hold the wire as tight as we can, right against the bat. So that way as the clay is shrinking, it can move away from the bat. And then we can just pick the bat up and we don't have to manipulate or, or touch the pot. Okay, we're going to let that set up leather hard and we're going to trim the foot. So this is the part where we really want to finish the piece. So I've got one here that I threw yesterday that's leather hard. What I like to do is, you know, when it's no longer tacky, when your fingers don't stick to it, that, that's good leather hard. And what I like to do is when it'll pop off the bat, turn it upside down so that you can get the base to start drying out as much so that you don't dry the rim out too much. So now we've got it a good, good leather hard stage all the way through, all the way down to the base. So we're going to just move this bat. And I'm not going to use a bat, I'm just going to uh, put the pot upside down. And it's kind of nice to be able to line it up with the lines on the, on the wheel. So get it uh, close to the middle. And what we're going to do is just take your needle tool and just start, just start moving it closer. And where it touches, that means that it's a little too close in that spot. So I'm going to push it directly away from where I made the line. And then we're going to double check that. And now that's hitting pretty evenly all the way around. So now we're just going to get a little ball of clay. And we want to make sure that we don't push it off. So we're going to hold it in place. And we're just going to put either three or four balls of clay right on the rim. This is another good reminder that we don't 
We don't want the rim to be too thin so that we would distort it or break it. And we don't want it to be too dry. So that's why we try and get it to dry out as evenly as possible so that we can hold it in place. Okay, so now that we've got that secured, get going a you know pretty good, nice, nice even speed. And just gonna take one of our trimming tools. I like to just rest my left hand on it and brace up against it so that I can hold it nice and steady. So once again, we start making some creative choices based on how thick or thin we think the clay is. And so I'm going to just follow the contour and I'm going to just start bringing this in and have the base be just a little bit narrower. I think that's, that's a nice uh, transition there that we, we're just gonna follow it all the way down. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna cut out the interior of the base. So we're just starting using the small end. We're just starting right in the middle and we're just moving out to the right. And then if we can stop the wheel and if you can, if you can move the clay, you know that it's getting fairly thin. Obviously, we don't want to keep trimming and just trim right through the base. So it's kind of nice to double check, to stop and check that. So I, I can move that. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean up this foot. So I'm thinking maybe something a little less than a half an inch. I'm going to go ahead and give that a little bevel on the inside. Now with this particular clay body, it's got a lot of sand in it. So you can tell right where you trim to. You can see all those cut marks. So while I've got it centered here, I'm going to go ahead and do a little burnishing. I'm just going to clean that up. This is, this is just right leather hard, so I'm, in, I'm just going to go come in here and just clean that up. And then, with as much moisture as this has in it, I can just kind of burnish, and even just with my fingers, just give a nice little bevel and clean that up. Okay, so we can just peel our clay away. And let's double check our craftsmanship. Let's see how we did on this one. That even though now that we've got it trimmed, I usually sign my name, but on this one, let's cut this one open as well and then and we'll be able to get an idea of what we're looking for when we trim so pretty even thickness on the walls all the way up doesn't get too thin at the shoulder for shaping you can see how we were able to trim and uh, leave it so that it's not too thick, not too thin for the base. So I think those are some of the craftsmanship issues that we're trying to learn on our very first bases and bowls. So thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.